Here he comes. He's a little loose through nine, though, as he moves up on the back of Jimmy Means. The white flag's out. He's starting to take it easy now. He's breaking his rhythm just a little bit. The move by Jimmy Means. He's down into turn one. Everybody else is still strung out. There may be a battle between Carter and Ivy, Dick Brooks, and Kyle Petty in seven as they battle for a top five position. Ricky Rudd, he's through the S's right now. He doesn't appear to be running as quick as he was on the previous laps. He's being quite careful. He's not going to hang the car out there. He's not going to jeopardize anything. For Ricky Rudd can see the dollar signs now. He can smell victory. It's eluded him since he started racing in 1975. He won a race earlier this year at Dover Downs, Delaware, a late model sportsman race as a preliminary to the Mason-Dixon 500. He's down the back straightaway. What a feeling he must have right now. I imagine there's probably a tear running down his cheek because it's taken a long time for the son of Al Rudd to reach victory lane. A beautiful shot now as he comes through the dog leg he heads for turn number nine. He looks sharp. The Monte Carlo SS, the Piedmont pacemaker, the pride of Chesapeake, Virginia, is on his way. You have to have feelings and emotion for a young driver like this who has persevered and persevered. And he's around for the finish. Harold Kinder waves a checkered flag. He has his hand out of the window for Ricky Rudd. It's his first victory ever coming here at Riverside, California. We've been waiting a long time for this. and. Just really tickled to death that it's come. It just really hadn't sunk in. It's hard to believe that this uh, Piedmont Airlines A&W Trucking Company car held together all day long. It was the strongest car on the racetrack. The guys back home did a good job on the motors. And we had the car that was the one to beat out there today, but we were just worried about finishing. We broke down the last three or four races. And here comes Ricky Rudd off of corner number seven. About to take the checkered flag and win the Budweiser at the Glen. And here is the battle for second position. There is the checkered and yellow waving simultaneously. Here come the Bodines off corner number seven, and Jeff finishes in second position. Brett right alongside him is in third, and Michael Waltrip, I believe, got fourth spot. Ricky Rudd, this will be his eighth, make that 12th Winston Cup win. He's only got about a couple hundred yards to go. Here he is off of corner number four. Ricky Rudd wins the Trans South 500 at Darlington. You know, these guys did a heck of a job on his tight Exxon EDS Chevrolet, Rick Hendricks. Uh, you know, the, the pitch strategy, uh, I think that's what won it for us today. The car handled good, and we just kind of kept fine-tuning it a little bit as the day went on. And, you know, at the end, we just sort of had a race to stopwatch, and uh, we, we knew what we were up against. But the guys really did this one today. Ricky Rudd and Billy Engel have a lap and a half to go. Dale Earnhardt has done everything he can. He has come from a lap down today, and he may take the point lead today from Ernie Irvin. Ricky Rudd's car looks like his own string right now. White flag. I'll tell you what, them guys right now have got goosebumps all over. They're not believing this. And Ernie Irvin's car is being pushed back up pit road and out of the race. As Ricky Rudd winds off the corner, Ted Musgrave goes after Morgan Shepard, and Mark Martin runs for Todd Bodine. Oh, he's got him. He's up under him going into turn three over here. Fourth place is the battle. Mark Martin takes it. Todd Bodine may get his first top five finish here. For the 15th time in his career, Ricky Rudd will take the checkered flag and win the Slick 5300. Unbelievable. I tell you, these guys done an excellent job on this Todd Ford. You know, we, we talk about it, but eight months ago we had a uh, 26,000 square foot warehouse. I had one jack and four jack stands, and I, I don't really take much credit. These guys came on board and worked their butts off night and day to, to build this win in a race car. He's already won twice here at Martinsville, looking for his third win. The white flag is out, less than a lap to go for Ricky Rudd, but again, he's in heavy traffic. Anything can happen, even on the last lap for Rudd. He's halfway around. I expect his spotters have told him, hey, you can get back there first. Just stay up there. Gordon is closing in, no question. But Rudd will do it. Ricky Rudd wins the Napa Auto Care 500 at Martinsville. And there was an incident coming off of corner number four for some cars. Ken Schrader is sideways. 
Well, Ricky Rudd, uh, folks, for you Ricky Rudd fans, he is awake and alert and smiling. He just said, hand me a Tide hat. I, I can't get up, but I got to wear my Tide hat. Congratulations, man. What an effort. Well, I'll tell you, these guys had a heck of a race car underneath them, man. It was, I was in trouble from about lap five. My helmet wasn't working, uh, really hot in a car, and got blisters on my back, on my butt, everywhere you can think of. But like Bill Engel kept me going. I said, I sure am going to enjoy we can get this thing this win. I'll enjoy uh, Monday in the hospital room somewhere recovering. But we got a heck of a race car. It was a good deal to win this thing today. Cruising on a Sunday afternoon. Not only is it 89 races since he won, it's his 44th Pocono start, and he has yet to go to victory lane here. He's going to run up on a couple of slow cars here. I don't think they're going to be a factor. I believe everybody's aware of the fact that he's coming. See uh, Terry Labonte pull down out of his way. Clear. Negotiate this last turn. Ease it down in there. And here he comes, smooth up off of turn three. Slider back into fourth gear. Well, he won practice. He killed it for the pole. And Ricky Rudd scores his 21st Winston Cup victory. The first time Rudd has ever won from the pole. As Michael McSwain and Linda Rudd climb down. Easy, fat back. Don't hurt yourself, buddy. Take it easy, man. <laughs> That's great. That is. I love it. These are a bunch of good guys right here. Ricky Rudd's a great guy, and there's another one right there. I can't Look at him. Oh, we're going to party tonight, boys. Man, I don't know, Dick. You know, in the beginning of the race, we couldn't get a hold of the racetrack, and those guys kept working on tire pressure, working on chassis, and uh, they got it dialed in, and, man, that thing ran at the end of that race. That thing would take off and fly. White flag is out. Final lap for Ricky Rudd. He inherited the lead when Rusty Wallace slipped off a two. Then Rudd's car got away. Kevin Harvick took the lead. He got back to Harvick. Used the old bump and run on him with five laps to go. And it's going to be a big night in the championship for Ricky Rudd. Checkered flag is up. Rudd wins the Chevy Monte Carlo 400 at Richmond. Uh, Rusty was real bad on that restart. I'm not really sure. He was holding the pack up. And, uh, I mean, we were running inches off each other, but uh, honestly can say, and I think Rusty will tell you, I didn't touch him. Uh, he was just trying to put the hammer down really hard. He knew he couldn't lift. Uh, he broke loose and uh, didn't get it back, you know. Stewart has knocked it down to 3.8 seconds, but if Rudd hits his marks, he'll get his second Sears Point checkered flag. Ricky Rudd will hit his marks. No question. For a long time, considered one of NASCAR's most accomplished road racers. And of course, he pretty much has promised us within a couple of weeks that an announcement will be made about his future, what he's going to do, and with this 28 car. The way his year is gone, I, I t just trust me. Let's get him back around here, okay? Okay. <laughs> I know things look really, really good, but at Pocono last week, a couple weeks ago, they looked really, really good, too. And he cut a tire. And at Dover, leading the race, missed a lug on the last pit stop. And Richmond, mechanical trouble, was up front there, and here he comes, down through the S's to turn 10 for the final time. One more corner, Ricky, turn 11. Tony Stewart closing in at the final corner. For the first time since Watkins Glen 1990, Ricky Rudd's going to be a road course winner. Ricky Rudd and the Haviland Taurus win the Dodge St. Mark 350. And so what happens in these situations oh. is we get pit crews involved. Harvick's pit crew coming in to intervene. And an army of Winston Cup officials. And Kevin will go for a visit to the big red truck. <laughs> you know, and those good wrench guys, they were there to protect Kevin from himself. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they were not, that's the only reason they were there. They weren't there after Ricky Rod. No, they were no. there to, yeah, exactly. These guys are going, hey, get off our car, man. <laughs> NASCAR officials telling Kevin to get off the car, get the crewman off the car. Kevin going to have his say. Well, here we go. He walks across the top of the 21. And now it's on. 
I'll tell you what, that big official, Big Andy. <laughs> big Andy's. Think about going by Andy. There's Todd Perry in the crew chief. Matt! <laughs> yeah. And Betty, we've got Todd Barry trying to hold back, Kevin. Very frustrating night, Kevin. Yeah, I tell you what. Gene Goodwin's car was good tonight. Ricky Rudd took a cheap shot at us. And if he's going to, you know, take a cheap shot, he's going to get one back. I promise you that. And it's off to the big red truck. There's Pat Tryson, the crew chief for Rudd. Marty? And uh, Ricky being pinned to the car right now by Pat Trice and his crew chief. Ricky, what was the contact with Kevin about? I don't know. Kevin had trouble on the restart. He couldn't get going or something. Anyway, went down turn one. I guess he just put on the brakes a little harder than he had been, and I got in the back of him. I mean, my fault, but wasn't on purpose. It was an accident. And this, this stuff here is just absolutely ridiculous that NASCAR will put up with us. This is our car that's going next week for the race. Look at the hood. Look at the damage. I mean, that's totally ridiculous after the race stuff like that. What did he say to you when he climbed out of the car? I, I couldn't hear him. He's, you know, got that little gap-yap mouth. I couldn't tell what he was saying. <laughs>